It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, integrity. honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, self and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice right here, right now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be your host this morning. Well, we've got some ugly business out there, folks going to try to take a look into some of it today. <clears throat> For the record, uh, you heard me talk before about the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TTIP, and TAFTA, and Congress has announced that they want to give fast-track authority to the President to initiate that and to implement it. Now, for the record, I don't want to give fast-track authority to this pr president to do anything. And the TPP and the TTIP, which have been negotiated over the past five years in complete and total and utter secrecy, has no business fast-tracking anything. We, the nation, we, are repre our representatives of we the people, have been kept from knowing the truth about what the TPP and the TTIP holds, and this fast-track authority will give the, the president the ability to force an up or down vote with no amendments. If you don't hear the danger klaxons ringing now, whooping in the background, take the cotton out of your ears. Our second topic is the EPA. You ain't going to believe this one actually handed over a town of 10,000 people and 1 million acres to an Indian tribal reservation. The Department of Interior, the Department of Justice, and the EPA took it upon themselves to steal 1 million acres from Wyoming and hand it over, including a town of 10,000 people, who used to be Wyomingans, but are now members of the Wind River Indian Reservation. you got to be kidding me. Under what authority does the EPA, or the Department of Justice, or the Department of the Interior for that matter, claim to have the ability to usurp Congress, usurp a 1905 law, and unilaterally make a decision about handing over 10,000 people, citizens, and a million acres to an independent government that exists within the United States of America? Now, I don't want to get into the issue of whether or not the Indians have a right to the land or not. It's not the point. I'm not saying the, Indian, the American Indians were treated fairly. They were treated horribly. Which, by the way, ought to waken you to the fact that if they would do that to the Indians, they will do it to you. Our third topic. So, where exactly, where exactly is all the gold. I mean, inquiring minds want to know. And I think we have a right to know. Our government and the Federal Reserve, a private banking cabal, private, mind you, they're no more federal than Federal Express. <laughs> they have control of Germany's gold. Germany asked to have the gold sent back a few years ago. They're sending it back in dribs and drabs. But even worse, they're not sending back the original gold. They're saying they had to melt down the original gold and recast it. Why? Anyone who knows anything about precious metals knows that bars, whether they're silver or gold or platinum or anything else, are serialized, stamped to ensure their authenticity and to melt that down and then recast them makes no sense whatsoever. Beck broke this story the other day 
He's been talking about it now. And it's time that we have a full accounting for not only where is the, the gold that belongs to Germany and others, but where is the gold that belongs to our country. Our fourth topic, Obama announces new promise zones, quote, unquote. Now, for the record, promise zones are effectively the new state of slavery in America. And he's going to spend billions of dollars of taxpayer money in an effort to try to utilize political gamesmanship to manipulate economic issues around the country. He's announced a group of them, and there are 20 totally slated for development. These are economically challenged communities that will receive tax incentives and grants. And the grants alone amount to $7.5 billion. God only knows what the tax incentives will be. We're going to talk about all these topics. I hope you're listening to us on americasvoicenow.org where you can stream our show live, either audio or video, your preference. You can also catch us on Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, on, on uh, Patriot FB, <clears throat> patriotfb.com, where not only do you have an opportunity to listen to America's Voice live right now and every morning, <clears throat> but you also have an opportunity to meet groups of other patriots that are of similar thought, similar mind. There are other radio stations there as well, including J.J. McCartney's show, The Conservative Junction Radio, Midnight Patriot Show, Cowboy Logic Radio, AVN, and others. Patriot Radio has a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week news talk music station, and I encourage you to join. <clears throat> you can also find us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. It's a public page. Even if you're not a Facebook user, you can still see all the information there. And you don't have to like us to see all of the content that we post there. I post anywhere between 5 and 25 stories a day. You should be aware of them. I don't do it for my health. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to make sure that you guys have the information that you need in order to be aware of what's going on around you in the nation. And you should like the page because when you click the like button, it shares that, those postings with your timeline as well. And then the people who are in your circle of influence see them. And all we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, is wake up America's patriots before we're beyond salvage. If you'd like to contact us, you can call us live during the program, 417-204-5141. If you'd like to have your voice heard on the air or put your input in on a specific topic or issue, you're welcome to call. 417-204-5141. You're also welcome to call our listen line 24 hours a day, seven days a week. While the show's on live, you can catch the listen line. Uh, 415-325-0725. That's 415-325-0725. Now, when you first call there, you'll hear an, an announcement. you got to wait about a minute or so before the show kicks in because it basically allows you to start the show from the beginning. So just bear with it. I know I've had people say to me, it takes too long for it to start. Just bear with it. You're using unlimited personal tracking device minutes anyway, so don't worry about it. I'll try to get it fixed by the folks over at Audio Now who've sponsored this listen line for us free of charge. Take advantage of it and spread the word. All right, let's get into our first stop topic because <clears throat> I think you guys need to understand the danger of the TPP and the TTIP and TAFTA. Now, the, the, the people in Congress, the congressional, alleged congressional leaders on the U.S. trade policy have introduced this legislation that would offer, or not, not offer, grant, that's their words, not mine, fast-track authority to enact these three global trade pacts all of which have been negotiated in secret, 
none of which are actually based on trade. In fact, the TPP, out of 26 chapters, only six of them deal with trade. The rest of them deal with Internet censorship, copyright laws, the way to infringe, you know, limitations on what you can do and can't do. And to make matters even worse, he's now offering to allow China to join the TPP. Big mistake. Moreover, it would allow foreign nations, including Australia, Brunei, Canada, J Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam, and soon China, to have benefits and privileges that United States companies do not have in our own nation. Ladies and gentlemen, a more sinister, more evil, more destructive policy could not be created. There are a lot of people in Congress who are for it. There are a few who are against it. Their primary concern is that they haven't been given a chance to read it, and they haven't. Two chapters have been leaked by WikiLeaks, but there's 26. Very few people have seen all of it, except, interestingly enough, the negotiators from the trade, uh, the, the trade groups have allowed themselves and in in the, the major corporations in the United States who, who benefit from this thing to not only participate and assist in the development of this trade pact, but also see all of it. Yet Congress has been prohibited from seeing it, but they're the ones who have to vote on it. You've got to be kidding me. It will sanction U.S. companies and the United States government itself and place our national sovereignty, our economic and independence and sovereignty under international tribunal law. We will lose control of our nation. Lose control of our nation. The two excerpts that have been leaked on this thing allow foreign corporations operating within the United States to appeal regulations on the environment, labor, and banking. And they would be enforced on American-owned businesses, not on foreign businesses, and there'd be no hope of a reprieve and no oversight <clears throat> by anyone or any agency or organization or court in the United States. Now you tell me how that benefits America. Go ahead, find me one thing. We could be sanctioned and our companies in the United States could be sh sanctioned for failing to impose regulations on our American run businesses <clears throat> and our multinational corporations but yet foreign multinationals and foreign businesses have unbelievable benefits and privileges that we preclude, from, we preclude our own companies from having. Why would one do that? That's like saying you're going to tell your own child he cannot go into the refrigerator to eat when he hasn't eaten in 24 hours, but you tell anyone on the street that they have access to it, no questions asked. Who would do that? Who would commit that kind of a reprehensible crime against their own flesh and blood? The TPP will, quote, restrict, police, and censor the internet, stifle free speech and innovation, radically decrease access to affordable medicine, circumvent protections for workers and the environment, expand economic inequality, prevent corporations from properly labeling genetically modified food, and individual foreign firms will be provided with equal status with sovereign nations. You see, that, ladies and gentlemen, is not the rise of fascism in the United States. That is the rise of global fascism the merger of corporations and nation states to subjugate you, the consumer, the cattle, the sheep, the crops, 
to be bought, sold, traded like a commodity, to be sheared and milked, and when your usefulness has been outlived, to be culled. 29 draft chapters of the TPP. Five deal with trade issues. Okay, so what do the other 24 deal with? One chapter actually provides incentives to offshore jobs to low-wage countries, essentially bleeding America of even more industry. And moreover, bleeding America of the few service jobs we have left. We've already given away all of our manufacturing, all of our production, most of our farming, and now they want to give away the service jobs. <clears throat> Many of the chapters impose limits on government policies that we rely on in our daily day in and out existence on things like safe food, a clean environment. Our domestic, federal, state, and local policies are going to be required to comply with TPP rules. Ladies and gentlemen, I announce the opening salvo of treason. Because when you aid and abet the enemy, and any and when we're talking enemy, we're talking economic. And these foreign nations are going to be given privileges within our nation and make us a sovereign country, make your state, the industries within your communities, subjected to foreign tribunals that have no interest in American sovereignty, no interest in American economic ben benefit. They are interested in their own benefit, and they are going to use this to, and I mean, I'm not talking about a tick, folks. I'm talking about siphoning the blood of America. This is treason. And this president has forced these negotiations to be held in secret. Do you know why? Because if this was exposed for what it is, the American people would rise up. And now, Congress and those complicit with this traitor are calling for fast-track authority, which means this goes to an up-or-down vote. No amendments. No ability to say, hey, this thing is not good for America. we got to take this chapter out or modify the language. No, it must be accepted as written, yes or no. Ladies and gentlemen, this should be the one aspect that has every American prepared to revolt. When you see the inside of this program, and what its capabilities are. And if you are watching this on YouTube, it's in the, the body of the, the uh, subject matter area. There's a link in there. What we do know about it and, and the little bit that we have been able, able to grasp. I mean, folks, not even Congress has seen this thing. But they're going to be required to sign on it. They're going to be required to vote on it. But they haven't read it. What happened the last time we had to pass something to see what was in it? Now we're going to do that, placing foreign governments, foreign tribunals, and foreign multinational corporations over above ourselves and our nation and our own companies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. We will lose our sovereignty as a nation. The rule of law will be completely undermined. Guess who's for it? The Business Roundtable. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce, who, by the way, I posted up an article today, says 2014 is the year of immigration reform. Let me tell you something. 75,000 members, and I posted up there a, a, a link so that you can find out who their members are. 75,000 industries <clears throat> and companies are members of the U.S. Com Chamber of Commerce. I got to tell you, Every single one of those companies should be boycotted, 
so that you are explaining to them that you're voting with your pocketbook. This is the country that made them great. This is the country that gave them their financial foundation. This is the nation by which they grew to greatness. And now they choose to betray that which was their start and their success. Under no circumstances can America allow this and any of these, the TPP, the TP, TTIP, or TAFTA to pass. You must enlist any and all, every other person within your circle of influence to block this fast-track authority. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your last chance to choose a side. You either stand with America or you stand against her. Make no mistake about it. And the mainstream media is complicit. How do I know that? Because you've never even heard of it. And it will affect every aspect of your life, every aspect of your business, every aspect of your state, your local governments, and our nation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a complete and utter betrayal of the obligation and the duty of the media. Visit our friends over at BatteryStation.com. We're hitting the end of this segment. i got a minute and a half left. Hit, uh, hit over there to BatteryStation.com. You can find their website at BatteryStation.com. You can find them at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. That's right off the square. Provide all kinds of, well, batteries and flashlights and everything electronic and digital that you can imagine. But in addition to that, they've got freeze-dried food. They've got bulk food. They have a co-op program that's available only to our listeners. Go in and ask for the co-op catalog. You'll get wholesale bulk food, 50-pound bags of it, 25-pound bags of it at wholesale prices. It's not open to anyone but our listeners. Make sure that you see our friends over there. You can call them at 417-257-7799. See our friends over at Patriot Cigar and Tobacco Shop on the Court Square in West Plains, 417-257-1776. While you're there, get yourself a haircut at Wits End Classic Barbershop, where I went yesterday and got mine cut. Ten bucks, get you a great haircut. A few dollars more, get you old-style hot lather shave with a straight razor and a hot towel. Make sure while you're there on the square, if you've got a legal issue in a federal or state uh, criminal court case, or anything along the lines of matrimonial and uh, uh, personal injury and things like that, you see the law offices of Jason Henry, Number 10, Court Square, 417-256-4100. Contact our friends over at Pizza Hut as well. You can see them on Tuesdays uh, where families eat, uh, kids eat free on family night. And during lunch break, they have, uh, which I believe is 11 to 2, they have a salad bar and uh, buffet style for pizza every day. Porter Wagoner Boulevard in West Plains. All right, folks. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, I am incensed about this, these, these trade agreements. These must be stopped. This is your call to action, ladies and gentlemen. Your call to action. Do not let your nation down in this time of crisis. We'll be right back. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Things aren't bad enough with a tyrant in chief who's a usurper, an illegal alien, a fraud, a counterfeiter, a liar, an American hating monster who is sitting in the greatest seat of power, not only in our nation, but in the world. But he's surrounded by people he's put in place and how he has gained their allegiance, how he has gained their 
participation in the destruction, the willful and intentional destruction of the United States of America is beyond my comprehension. He's not alone. Literally tens of thousands of government minions work to achieve his ends. Groups like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of the Interior, and the Department of Injustice, including Eric Holder, a racist, a traitor, a monster, and a man who should be in prison. He is a criminal. He has been found to be so by Congress itself. He's a liar, a murderer, or at least an accessory to murder, and he should be tried and convicted and then sentenced accordingly. Harsh words, huh? Tough. The residents of Riverton, Wyoming, woke up one morning to find that they no longer were Wyomingans. They were now members of the Wind River tribe in the Wind River Indian Reservation. How could such a thing happen here in the United States of America? Well, according to the EPA, the Department of the Interior and the Department of Justice, last month, they made a unilateral decision to violate congressional law, a 1905 law. I mean, this, is, this law, folks, is 107 years old. And they declared the entire town of 10,000 residents in, a, in concert with one million acres surrounding it. Now, a million acres, ladies and gentlemen, is a big area. I mean, a million acres is, you know, pretty close to the size of a state like Rhode Island. And they decided to give it all to the Wind River Indian Reservation. And get this, the governor only found out when he heard about it in the media. If you don't call that treason, I don't know what you can. Matt Mead, the governor, was not even notified that they'd done so. Now, here's a governor who is responsible for the people, the land. He's the CEO of a state, the chief executive officer. And he has to find out by the media that the EPA, the Department of the Interior, and Eric Holder's Department of Injustice have given away a million acres of his land and 10,000 of his residents to an Indian reservation, which is now not subject to state law, but is a nation independent, sovereign unto itself within his state. The EPA declared that Riverton was part of the Wind River Indian Reservation, granting it, quote, treatment as a state. You've got to be kidding me. California's been trying to secede away the northern segment of California for the past, I don't know, 30 years. Eastern Mar Western Maryland wants to secede away from Eastern Maryland because it doesn't represent them. Northern Colorado wants to secede away from Southern Colorado because it doesn't represent them. They try to do it through the legal process of going through the voters and putting it before the state legislature and trying to work through the issues of how do we create a new state which would require the approval of the traitors in Congress. But with the stroke of a pen, the EPA the Department of the Interior, and Eric Holder's Department of Injustice do what, what 
thousands upon thousands upon thousands of citizens have been trying to do and cannot accomplish. Because they're trying to do it in a lawful way. But these three agencies operated completely unethically, illegally, immorally, Ill unlawfully. The lawlessness exhibited by this administration, ladies and gentlemen, has reached a crisis. They did this under the Clean Air Act. You've got to be kidding me. Find me authority in the Constitution that grants any agency. The only two that legally exist under the Constitution are Commerce and Border Patrol. That is it. Everyone else is an extra-constitutional, illegal existence. The FAA, the FCC, the ATF, the DOI, the, 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 every one of them. The FDA, I mean, the U.S. Trade Association, all of these groups are illegal. They have no existence under the Constitution. And they've upended and undone the tribal boundaries that were set in place by a 1905 Act of Congress. The EPA grants the tribe's claim? Who is the EPA to grant anything? One million acres. The town of Riverton, a town of 10,000. Been turned over to an Indian tribe. And it comes with a whole, a whole cornucopia of problems related to taxation. Law enforcement, who's responsible? Since Riverton is now part of the Wind River Reservation, it's no longer eligible for state services. So you're paying state tax. To whom? For what? Do you pay state tax anymore? Who, do you dial, who comes when you dial 911? Who do you go to for a, a land issue? Do you go to the state court? Do you go to the federal court? Well, we don't have to worry about any of that. We're just going to do what we want says the EPA, the DOI, and the DOJ. Riverton, they say, is now part of the Wind River Reservation, and therefore it's no longer eligible for state services and no longer falls under local law enforcement. Aha. Governor Meade, however, has ordered that state agencies conduct, quote, business as usual. Here's what he has to say. I'm sorry, this is State Senator Leland Christensen. This is an alarming action. When you have a federal agency step in and start to undo congressional acts that has been, within, that has been part of our history for 108 years with the stroke of a pen, without talking to the biggest groups that are impacted. And that they would, and that would be the city of Riverton and the state of Wyoming itself. They didn't ask anybody's opinion. They just acted unilaterally with stolen, traitorous, treasonous authority. Usurped it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is fascism on its face. According to Meade's office, the EPA's decision came as a surprise, and he only found out about it from the media, not even the EPA itself. Meade wrote to the EPA administrator, Gina McCarthy, last August, detailing his concerns about the implications of granting the tribe's request to effectively override the 1905 Act. The tribe sent a request into the EPA to be given this land under the Clean Water Act. The tribe says and remains adamant that Riverton 
and the one million acres of land belongs to them. And they argue that the state once supported such a conclusion. They criticize the governor's office and say he's changing his tune. Well, how can that be when he didn't even know it was done? Where is the national attention on this? Why isn't this all over Fox News, Communist News Network, MSLSD, ABC, CBS, NBC, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Chicago Tribune, Miami Herald, LA Times? Where is it? Wyoming Senators Mike Enzi and John Barrasso along with uh, Cynthia Lumens, the EPA's decision has, in effect, overturned a law that has been governing land and relationships for more than 100 years. We are very concerned about the political ramifications this decision could have for the tribes and the state of Wyoming. It's been going on now for some time because it started back in 2008, uh, uh, nine, excuse me, on a tax case that the state urged the courts not to drop because, quote, the implications of ruling on a boundary without the federal government and the Eastern Shoshone tribe being involved in the case. There's been two cases heard on state, in state court on this issue, and <clears throat> one state court, and this is the state Supreme Court, found four the reservation, and another state Supreme Court decision found for the town of Riverton. So who is the, who is the EPA to step in like Solomon and say, we're going to make a decision that binds all of you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Tenth Amendment violation of the rights of the people of Wyoming and the sovereignty of that state. The EPA won't respond with comments. No surprise there. Folks, I, you know, I got to tell you, every day I see the level of government drafting, drawing off, and providing itself greater authority and autonomy outside of the Constitution's boundaries, outside of any legal concepts or precepts, outside of any justifiable or, or even rational principles. And I am losing faith in our ability to avoid where, we, where I suspect we are headed. I, you know, I posted an article up on our Facebook page today. There's an article out there called Violence in the Face of Tyranny is Often Necessary. It's on Alt Market. And I put it up there not because I, I, I suggest violent behavior and I don't condone it. We cannot allow our nation to descend into this. We have an opportunity to attempt to restore the rule of law via massive civil peaceful disobedience, via multiple fronts where we attack this, this, this diamond from hell by assaulting every facet of the diamond simultaneously through things like the pact, which I described to you all the other day, with things like the, the Article 5 constitutional measures, and amendments that can be drafted into the Constitution that do not require congressional participation. With massive civil peaceful disobedience, when I say that, I'm not talking about a couple of hundred thousand people going to march on Washington. I'm talking about 10, 20, 30, 50 million who make it so obvious that no one can ignore the realities. 
We as a people, we abhor mass violence. Violence in the, in the form of revolt, if that's what it takes. And we should abhor that. We should not condone that. We should not look at that as the next step. This nation is not prepared mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, or any other manner to employ the Second Amendment. That was our founder's version of the principles of mutually assured destruction. The idea that it was such a strong deterrent that no government would operate in tyranny. I think that they, I don't think they foresaw the evil that men would be willing to stoop to. I don't think they foresaw a country that would betray itself. You know, their experience was with England, a far away parent, but not really a nation within itself. I mean, the United States in its earliest days prior to the Declaration of Independence was a colony, but it was not in merry old England. It was not a a, 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 a district. They had been operating under their own, you know, limited governmental authority and autonomously and over, over generations and generations, it was clear that their representation, they were looked upon as like we are looked upon now, chattel, livestock, crops to be milked and bought and sold and traded by a faraway government that had no interest in what was truly in their best interest. But I don't think they grasped the fact that our own people from our own districts, from our own hometowns, would be willing to betray us like this. That's why they insisted on the Second Amendment. Because it was the concept that no government would be foolish enough to attempt to tyrannize and terrorize its own citizenry in the face of armed, an armed populace. But like all concepts of mutually assured destruction, it was not meant to be used. It was a deterrent. Like our nuclear weapons, which we have spent hundreds of billions of dollars to be built, they're never supposed to leave the ground. The idea is the potential of that kind of destruction is so enormous, so awful, so evil, so unforgiving, that no man would be insane enough to kick that off. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a quote I've used many times from Ayn Rand. I don't care whether you like her or not. If you're a critical thinker, you accept reality for what it is even when it's from someone you don't like. Here's what she said. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequence of reality. You can ignore that it's happening, but it doesn't mean that those consequences aren't going to land in your lap with real-world application, real-world problems, real-world concerns that will affect you. To ignore that statement, to shunt it off because you don't like her or her philosophy or her atheism or anything else, 
would be a cataclysmic mistake. We must face the fact that our federal government is intent upon waging war on the citizens of the United States if we are unwilling to capitulate to their plan for total 100% domination of all of us. Their intention is your 100% enslavement. I strongly encourage you to find this article and read it. I submit it because, as a critical thinker, you have a duty and an obligation to look at all the facets of the diamond before you make a decision about where you stand on any given issue. And ladies and gentlemen, to allow this diamond, which is a accursed stone of hell, of evil, to allow that to be purchased without investigating it, without looking at it, without doing your due diligence, that would be a mistake. I don't advocate or promote violent confrontation. But I refuse to stand here and say, my abhorrence of violence is so strong that I refuse to look at the historical context and know that history does repeat itself. I refuse to be intellectually dishonest And you should, too. I refuse to put my head in the sand and expose my posterior and wait cowering and shuddering in fear. The article deals with the Russian assault in Europe, and it was specifically the Russians had, had attempted to, well, I, I can't get into the whole story. We've only got a minute left. But essentially, this was the, the uh, well, go read the story. If you, can't, if you can't get to the links, I'll tell you what it is. Just type this into a browser. Violence in the face of tyranny is often necessary. It's on alt-market.com. Violence in the face of tyranny is often necessary. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Make sure that you, uh, you visit our friends and our sponsors and let them know that you found them by going to americasvoicenow.org uh, and, and by listening to America's Voice Now on a radio or on any other area that you've seen us on. You can find them, uh, you can find the Patriot uh, Cigar and Tobacco Shop at number 2 Court Square, West Plains, 417-257-1776. Witsend Classic Barbershop, also at number two Court Square. Get yourself a great haircut for 10 bucks. Law Offices of Jason Henry, also on the Court Square in West Plains, 417-256-4100. State and, civil, state and federal civil and, and criminal cases. Friends over at Pizza Hut on Porter Wagoner Boulevard. Great lunch specials and a buffet every day. And family night on Tuesday night where kids eat free. And the Battery Station at batterystation.com. 303 Washington Avenue, West Plains, 417-257-7799. We're going to be back in just a moment. When we do, we're going to tackle our third subject. Where exactly is all the gold? I mean, where exactly is all the gold? It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity. 
honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. All right. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Good morning. Not quite sure where you're catching us from, but I'm glad you've joined us. America's Voice Now is the name of this program, and our goal and our job is to make sure that you are not influenced by propaganda, that you have an opportunity and a methodology of finding alternative news that affects your life. What the mainstream media and the Ministry of Propaganda will not give you, we will bring to you. We'll help you analyze it and give you a launch pad by which you can then utilize your own critical thinking skills, your own intelligence, your own brilliance, and your own God-given gifts to make your own decisions, to formulate your own opinions, and then act accordingly. It's not my place to tell you what to think. It's only my place to give you an opportunity to see what the mainstream media will never, ever talk to you about. I got to tell you, There are real crises going on in our nation. And the, the Ministry of Propaganda would have you believe that, you know, it's all about this nickel and dime nonsense that they try to shove down your throat. They try to twist the truth. They try to manipulate your thinking. They tell you what to eat, what to think, what to, when to sleep, when to wake up. I got to tell you, That control box that sits in your house, maybe multiple control boxes, is your undoing. It is your undoing. Make no mistake about it. If you're allowing that, you ever hear the old phrase, garbage in, garbage out? If you're old enough to remember that, it was from the early days of the computer industry, and basically it said... If you put garbage code into a computer, which can only basically answer by ones and zeros and analyze that information, and it's either on or it's off, that you're going to get garbage out the other other end. If you sit down and you do a long and complex mathematical equation and you utilize incorrect figures anywhere during the course of that, the sum at the other end is not going to be right. It's not a question of making a mistake at the end. The mistake is in the beginning where you put in the wrong number. And what we have is a torrent, a tirade of wrong information. I broke the news months ago that under the Federal Register, the United States of America invalidated the Smith-Munt Act and allowed propaganda to be fed to America. What do you think all of this information that you hear is? It is all propaganda. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what propaganda is, I strongly encourage you to wake the heck up. You're being propagandized every day. Every commercial that you see, every one of those commercials that tries to sell you gold or silver, they're manipulating you on fear. Every one that tries to sell you Depends underwear is manipulating you. Every one that tells you about some great new drug that cures the fungus in your toenails but might destroy your liver is manipulating you. The 
There are legitimate things to fear. I'm not, de- I'm not denying that. But you see, you are being manipulated about food, about clothing, about fashion, about what's important. It's traitorous, treasonous, self-treason. I don't mean they're traitors. I don't mean they're treasonous. I mean you're being treasonous to yourself because you refuse to stop it. And all you got to do to stop it is hit the Dagnab remote control. Put down the idiot box and start adhering to your 2014 resolution to read and resist. Read. Why read? Because it is the only way that you are ever going to finally get the truth. Read your Constitution. Read your founders' documents. See what they had to say. Read news articles from alternative media, not the mainstream. They're manipulating you. Utilizing propagandic tactics that have been in place for 10,000 years. You're just dumb enough to believe that, well, it wouldn't happen here. I mean, they're not using that kind of stuff on us. I mean, you know, it's just like they're really just trying to sell their product. Sales is propaganda, ladies and gentlemen. It's not limited to governments. And when you take a drug and ingest it so that you can cure some For all intents and purposes, half of them are full maladies anyway. They're not even legitimate or real. They're in your imagination because you've been told to think you got one. And you take that pill because you think it's going to improve something, but you take the risk that, you know, you may end up with a, a rotten liver Don't you ever listen to those pharmaceutical commercials when they're telling you the risks? I mean, who would eat that? Who would willingly take that pill? I'd be afraid to take that pill. We hear about the financial markets. And we see all this talk about how the Dow has hit a, 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 a historic high. You should get into the market now. Who gets into the market when it's at its peak? Idiots, that's who. Well, we don't know when the peak is going to be, so maybe the peak is another 5,000 points higher if we just get in now. That's true, but maybe the peak is 5,000 points, or maybe that maybe... What's coming is 5,000 points lower. Maybe what's coming is 8,000 points lower. Maybe what's coming is 12,000 points lower. Maybe the best investment for you may be a couple of dozen cases of tuna fish. Because when tuna fish hit $6 a can and you bought it for $1.39, I can't think of a Wall Street investment that would do a better job for you. Maybe what you should be buying is cases of ammunition. It never goes down in value, folks. Firearms are probably one of the best investments you can make. They never go down in value. What are you going to do? Throw your stock certificates at the tyrants as they kick in your door? You going to feed them to your kid or are you just going to wipe his bottom? That's all those stock certificates are going to be worth. If you don't think that there is a cataclysmic loss coming here of global proportions, you're a darn fool. 
I'm not saying it's around the corner tomorrow morning or next month or next week or next year or whenever it is. I don't know. But I am telling you that the evidence is so overwhelming for you to ignore it would be for me to go back and throw again in your face Ayn Rand's quote. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequence of avoiding or ignoring that reality. You can avoid the reality all you want. You can stand there and insist that train doesn't really matter. But if you don't get off the track, you will shortly find yourself to be a grease spot all over the front headlight. Now, Germany asked for its gold back a couple of years ago, and the Fed, who was supposed to be holding it in trust, not only won't give it back, they won't allow it to be audited. And what's worse is what they, what they are sending back in dribs and drabs, and I can't imagine why. If you went to your bank and you said, I want to withdraw my money, and the bank said, well, you got $100 million in here, Let's, let's not use 100, let's use a million dollars. You've got a million dollars in here, and we're only going to let you take out $100,000 a year. You'd say, well, wait a minute, it's my money. The point is this, ladies and gentlemen, the proof is out there that we are looking at an unmitigated and unprecedented financial collapse that is not a question of if, it's only a question of when. When the Federal Reserve says, we can't give you your gold back in full, it's because they don't have it. And then when they give it back to you, but it's not the same gold that was serial numbered and stamped with your national mark. And they say, well, we had to melt it down and recast it. For what? Why? You were given that to hold it in trust. I'll tell you why. Because the Federal Reserve is doing what they have allowed banks to do for the last hundred years. Fractional reserves. And if you don't know what fractional reserves are, holy smoke. They're lending and borrowing on that gold that doesn't belong to them. They were given it in trust, and they've been abusing that trust. And there's no oversight because they can't be audited because they're not a government agency. They're a private cabal of thug bankers. They wear suits. And they use fine and refined language and they drink $1,000 bottles of wine. But they're thugs nonetheless. This gold does not belong to the Federal Reserve or anyone else. Germany's got a right to their gold back. And we're talking metric tons here, folks. We're not talking about, you know, a few bars. We're talking of metric tonnage. Where is it? And if we can't produce that little bit of gold that we're holding theoretically in trust for Germany, what about all the other gold we're holding for all the other countries in trust? And what about the gold they're supposed to be holding that belongs to us in trust? You see, Germany is only the symptom of the cancer. That's all it is. It's just a warning shot. 
that every American should be hearing. This, folks, promises to be Well, look, I don't know how else. L l let me put it to you this way. If the International Monetary Fund is openly now talking about nation states defaulting on their debt, and they do not mean, you know, some third world country that doesn't grow anything but bananas and pot. They're talking about nations like the United States of America, like France and Germany and Italy and Spain and, and, and the UK. They're talking about Russia. And they are warning that these nation states will default on their debt. And they have openly advocated a plan to shave savings accounts, 401 401k retirement accounts, pension funds, in an effort to stave off what? The inevitable. See, it's not me wearing some kind of a tinfoil hat thinking that ultimately this is going to draw to international global financial collapse. I'm not saying it. They're saying it. I'm just repeating what they're already telling us. Nation states are set to default on their debt. And if you don't think this clipping concept will work, you're wrong. They've already done it in Cyprus and they did it in Greece. And they will do it now again in other non-third world countries. The Western world is about to get a haircut. And when we don't have the gold to produce, I mean, look, think about it for a moment. Our debt alone in the United States of America, well, I mean, we're not talking about the 17 trillion. That's bad enough. It's actually 18 now. And we're not talking about the other unfunded liabilities of another 50 or 70 trillion and the other unfunded liabilities on top of that that are another 120 trillion we're not talking about the 200 trillion that we actually know about but there is another 200 trillion out there in financial paper that doesn't really even exist backed up by nothing i mean our debt alone and our commitments for the next 20 years, just that alone, ladies and gentlemen, exceeds the value of all the assets on the planet Earth together. If we sold ourselves as a global space to the Martians, we couldn't pay off just the United States debt alone. you got to be kidding me. What part of that don't you understand? If we have a debt that exceeds the asset value of the planet, how can global financial collapse not occur? A house of cards, no matter how well-constructed is still only a house of cards. And America had better recognize that for all intents and purposes, the jig is up. We're done. Fiscally, financially, we're beyond salvage. And that is for all intents and purposes, folks, the reason why our governments are preparing to go to war against us, because when the total level of malfeasance is exposed, they know that there are going to be some very, very, very angry natives 
who are going to be very, very restless. That's why your small towns and cities and, and, your, and your police departments and your, state, and your state law enforcement and your sheriff's departments are being loaded up with military gear. It's pre-staging military materiel where it will be needed. Because once this dam bursts, once the bridge breaks, once the house of cards falls, they know that it's going to require a steel fist to crush Who's subject to that crushing? You are. And all your dreams about fancy houses and boats and cars and, and, and jewelry and fashion, it's all going to be lost. All those things that you are, that you are stating emphatically are your reasons for not having the courage of your convictions to stand and fight are going to be taken from you. And you won't have them, and you will not have stopped the onslaught of evil. And mark my words, this is evil. When our nation, the last pillar holding up the roof of freedom over the planet Earth, when we fall, the darkness that will descend over this globe will last for how many generations? How many hundreds of years? Thousands? We don't know. But it will be complete and utter darkness, terror, and tyranny. Whew. We're at the end, folks. And I don't know how else to say it. There's no nice way to put it. The money doesn't exist. The gold doesn't exist. The government's building up caches of military materiel to enforce tyranny upon you. Congress is working complicitly because they recognize the end is here. They know the inside story. Those that are willing to stand up have been co-opted or coerced into silence. The judges and the courts are in on it. And this president is leading us down the road to ruin. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. Please find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org, patriotfb.com, youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now, 99.3 KUNQ, and a host of other places. Boy, folks, I'm getting weary of feeling like the nation is just completely and utterly asleep. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, April. Hi, how are you? Good. Hang on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I don't know why you're not why you're coming through the speaker. Hold on. Is that any? Oh, are you there now? April, are you there? April, are you there? All right, you're listening to America's Voice Now. We're back with our last segment of the day and, frankly, the last segment of the week. And I got to tell you, folks, things are looking pretty dire. I don't know how much more we can take and how much more we can live with 
under the current circumstances. I mean, we're 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 in some serious trouble here, folks. And now you got this Obama out there slamming around saying he's going to create these new economic promise zones. Which are nothing more than another giveaway of taxpayer money to fund and approve and, and expand his own agenda, which is the utter and complete desolation and destruction of the United States of America. And he's, gonna do, and he's doing so with our money, people. Twenty of them he's promising. San Antonio, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, southeastern Kentucky, and the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Those are the first ones announced. I heard a, an analysis of it where, he was, where, where the comment was, the reason he chose the southeastern edge of Kentucky, the southeastern end of Kentucky, is because it enables him to utilize that as a political weapon against Rand Paul, who's from Kentucky, and Mitch McConnell. And if Mitch McConnell fights back against these, then whoever's running against him will be able to say, see, Mitch isn't for the poor guy. It makes sense. In fact, Mitch had a private meeting with the president the other day. What would it have been worth to be a fly on the wall for that? These economic promise zones are to be funded with taxpayer dollars. The claims are that in the east side of San Antonio, four in 10 adults don't have a high school diploma. The violent crime rate is 50% higher than the rest of the city. Schools and community members can't focus on getting an education. The truth of the matter is, most of that would, most of that is not attributable to a lack of economic issues. That's attributable to a massive influx of illegal Im immigrants, illegal aliens, a complete and utter breakdown in the moral fabric of our society, a dis the, the destruction of the education system in the United States. And it's not limited to, to San Antonio or Los Angeles or Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, 80% of the kids, and I did an entire show on this one day, 80% of the kids who graduate high school in New York cannot read well enough to go for a high school, for a, a community college and, and pass the community college entrance exams. 80%. Meanwhile, New York City is spending $70 million a year on what they classify or call the rubber rooms. These are the rooms where those teachers who have been caught touching a student or disciplinary issues for whatever reason are held while they're fully paid, awaiting the years and years and years it takes to get through the unions and the courts to remove them from the education system. $70 million a year. <coughs> the federal government has spent $7.5 billion of American taxpayer money to fund global warming studies for other countries. That exceeds the amount of money that we give away to foreign nations for economic support. Global warming's a hoax and everybody knows it. You see, what we're, what we're dealing with here right now is the bloodletting. We are being bled. This is no different than a, 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 a go, going into a blood bank 
And instead of them taking a pint, they take two quarts and leave you on the edge of death. We are being systematically turned into a third world nation. And in extraordinarily short order, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't something that has, I mean, the plans have been in the works for a long time, but the actual implementation of it has accelerated in the last five years, and frankly, since 2000, by both parties. We are at a, at a crisis in our nation. We're at a crisis in our spirituality, our morality. I had someone say to me the other day, you make some good points, but if you don't talk about the fact that, that we have a hope, a final hope in Jesus Christ, uh, that you're... you're, you're wasting your time because, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, essentially, if the people, I mean, even if we lose, we win. Well, I get that, but I, I, I got to tell you, that's not acceptable because it's not just me I got to worry about. It's also the children I brought into this world thinking that there was going to be some hope for them. It's selfish for me to sit here and say, I know where I'm going when I get beheaded for my beliefs and not think about what the impact is going to be on my family, isn't it? My children, whom I would willingly give my life for. You know, it's... It's all, it's one thing to say, that we're secure in the knowledge of what's going to happen with our lives and our futures in the afterlife. And not take into consideration the fact that we're, we're, we're <laughs> by that and, and, and that whole attitude of, well, I'm just going to stand on the sidelines because and, and, this is God's will. I disagree, and, and I, I'm going to say something that, that's going to, you know, get some people angry about me, and I don't really care. There's, you know, there's 60 million Chinese that would disagree with that thinking, and there's 50 million Russians and, and Ukrainians who would disagree with that thinking, and some 18 million Europeans who would disagree with that thinking. Of course, for them, hindsight's 2020. I don't think God's intention for us is to sit here and idly say, well, this was God's plan, so I guess we're just going to have to muddle our way through it. That's not God talking. That's the devil talking to you. Boy, am I going to get some email now, huh? Well, guess what? I really don't care. And if you don't like what I talk about, and if you don't like the way I think, that's on you because that shows me that you're not willing to step out of your own bias to consider something else. That you're so rigid in your belief. I'm okay with being beheaded, but I'm not okay with leaving my kids behind to be beheaded by the same tyrant through no fault of their own. Would our founders have stood up and said, well, it's God's will that we sit here under the iron fist of this tyrant on the other side of a pond? That's not what they said. They said, God gave me a gift I'm not respecting because I am refusing to stand up and hold that which I was given. Liberty, freedom, individual choice, free will, and the right of self-defense.
And the 501c3 advocates out there are going to stand there and scream, well, that's not true. Well, I say you've been bribed. I say you've been co-opted, coerced, and you have betrayed us. And I'm not willing to accept your interpretation of God's intention from me. God intended I have free will. God intended that I have the wherewithal and the ability to defend myself and my family. He gave me those gifts. And you cannot mitigate or take them away. Neither can any government. He gave me a brilliant mind that can conceive and think. And if you want to shut me down because you don't like the way I think with the mind and the gifts that I were given, then you better question your own motives. Is the slavery that you're advocating any better than the slavery that Obama and his minions are advocating? This is the inevitable will of God. No, it ain't. It's only the inevitable will of God because you're unwilling to stand up and stand, and, 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 and stand tall for it. Or you're afraid, or there's something in it for you. And I'm not just talking to ministers. I'm talking to lay people. I'm talking to everybody who can hear my voice. God didn't intend for you to sit here and lay down and cower. Starved, terrified, broken. It's okay to be secure in the knowledge of where you're going to go on the other side. It's not okay to try to fail to try to prevent that from happening. See, the truth is, we're all looking for an excuse to avoid what's obviously inevitable. Because the human failing, the great human failing is, the minute we acknowledge that there is a problem, the logical step is you must take mitigating action to defend and protect yourself and your interests. It's that simple. And we've been so compromised into thinking we should be non-confrontational I, 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 you know, there's no easy answers to this, folks, but I got to tell you, you, standing here and pretending that, that this is all going to end well, that's self-treason. That's self-delusion. And I know I know here and I know here that God doesn't want that for me. He doesn't want me to delude myself. He wants me to deal with the realities of the here and now. And he expects me to honor and treat the gift I've been given of my mind and my soul and my spirit and my life with respect to treat that as the gift it was to not throw this pearl before swine
This premise, this concept that America must sit aside and allow these monsters to do to us as they will because we have reaped the wrath of God for our failure to stand up prior should not be an excuse for us to fail to stand up now. I've heard that argument. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't fear death. But I do fear watching my children starve, or my daughter be raped, or my son be tortured, or just plain enslaved. I do fear them living in rags and watching the weight fall off of them. I do fear the impact that that will have on their spirituality and their belief and their trust in the God that I believe in. How should I not? How can I not? What father, when his son asks him for bread, would hand him the snake, the stone? Who? Who would do that? This constant promise of government can solve this through economic zones. It's a smoke screen. It's a, it's, it's a smoke bomb thrown onto the battlefield to discourage you, to betray you, to entice you with the treatment and w to entice you with It's like being offered, it's like, it's like the, 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 the monster, the, the child molester who entices a child into the car with candy. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be willing to stand up and look at the realities of of our situation. We must be willing to acknowledge that God's plan for us was not subjugation and an ugly martyr's death at the hands of some tyrant. preceded by years of degradation and hunger and abuse. You may believe that, because you're entitled to believe whatever you want. But I've read his word, and that's not what it says. I have felt his spirit, and that's not what he's given me. I've heard his word, and that's not what it tells me. Our nation is in trouble because we have fallen down. 
We have failed ourselves. We have failed our nation. We have failed our God. We've allowed ourselves to be seduced and enticed by all manners of evil, including that evil of, it's out of my hands. It's not out of my hands. It's not out of yours. No one forces you to accept. You accept and agree to tyranny on your own. It's a decision that you will make. But I'll continue to stand out here, and I will continue to raise my voice, to alert and awaken as many as I can. And if I choose because I don't want to alienate those who are coming awake with whether or not I'm a Baptist or I'm a Methodist or I'm a Lutheran or I'm a Catholic, I'm already giving them harsh reality. And I'll let God's spirit do that work. But this is a mission too. And I've been given it, like it or not. There is no promise zone There is no promised land. There is only you. There is you, there is your belief, there is your faith, there is your spirit. There is your integrity and your own righteousness. And you either have it or you don't. But failing to defend and protect that which we've been entrusted with and given, that's a violation of every precept that I was created for. I was given the gift, and you were, to self-govern. I was given the gift of intelligence and rationing and reason, rational thought, reasoning, sentience. And that comes with a responsibility to honor it. And not, not throw it into the mud before the swine because I'm unwilling to stand up because I'm unwilling to stand forth and do what I know to be right and to protect that gift which has been given to me which I should be cherishing and defending with my very being there is no promise zone folks Not here. Not on this earth. You've been listening to America's Voice now. If you're religious, spend some time talking to your God. If you're not, spend some time talking to your Creator. And do it soon. Y'all have a great day. God bless you. We'll see you on Monday. It's America's Voice signing off for the day. <laughs>